regularly scheduled videos to return. Uh, if there's ever one that's a little funky, like the last chess day was, you know, just a workout with no car talk, or if there is no workout and it's just me talking somewhere, don't worry. That is not just because I was lazy that day. Come on. More, uh, actually, every time the videos scheduling wise kind of change, that just means that something is going on. And something definitely was going on this weekend. This was fucking sweet. Anybody who made it out to the Detroit Pro Show, you had a good time. <laughs> no, that was fucking super fun. So it was like a full day of, um, so it was 9 to 5, kind of meet and greet style. Much more chill than the Arnold. This is, um, this is something which you kind of may not think about, but the Arnold was fucking hectic, man. There was a lot of moving pieces going around over there. It's real high, kind of high energy. So if you kind of made it to this one, and you're up, and you're also at the Arnold, if you kind of doubled up with the with the Sam sightings, I like this one way more. You can actually talk to everybody for a couple of minutes. I'm talking to you specifically. The guy who brought me those three kind of waffle cut long sleeve shirts. I was trying to find one. I kind of, um, my mom drove up, but I didn't have enough space in my luggage for it to, uh, to fly back. So I gave them to her. But those will be worn. Those will be worn for sure. Super cool. But yeah, so totally fun. Just fucking, you know, five minutes of. Or, you know, a couple of minutes of chit-chat with everybody. And then at night, we got to actually watch the fucking pro show. Which, congratulations, Martin. Oh, my goodness. If you see pictures of these dudes, the open guys especially, you know, Instagram, you're like, oh, yeah, that guy's pretty fucking huge. Yeah, I mean, look, he's got big muscles. You don't know what you're talking about. You have not opened your eyes until you're sitting right next to one of these guys. Smelling the fucking pro tan backstage. No, that was fucking super cool. Now I'm just... <laughs> I, it kind of sucks, because now I've, I've still got like six uh, six or seven weeks before I can start pushing the food and, you know, bulking up. Because when I get to be around these guys, I'm talking literally when they're, you know, normal weight walking around, not water depleted, like Samson, everybody. These guys are 300 fucking pounds. <laughs> And I don't feel small. Look, I'm still a big dude, but I don't feel huge either. So whether or not that's good for my mental perception and like my body dysmorphia, uh, it is cool to see kind of just how far the envelope can be pushed. Really, the main thing I'm kind of getting excited about now is to start eating more. Because for me, that's the one thing which is really limiting me size-wise is the food. You know, I was talking to a... Uh, I was talking to Seth Ferrosi in the back, and I was like, you know what? This bulk, or this next bulk, the one coming, I'm going to change it up a touch. Because this whole time, diet-wise, I have kind of approached it like, you know, hit your macros for the day, and you're good. Which, in terms of weight gain and weight loss, that is totally fucking true, 100%. But bulking-wise... I can always tell I've got way more steady progress when I'm eating my meals evenly dispersed. And whenever, you know, I, I haven't really eaten too much food or it's, I've only had like a thousand calories for the day and it's like, you know, fucking seven o'clock, eight o'clock and I get you know, the, the last 4,000 calories in before bed, sure, for the day, you know, I had 5,000 calories, I ate in a surplus. But it's just not the same. It is just not the same. And unfortunately, sometimes that kind of has to be the case. Uh, just because I've been, you know, I don't get to sit around all day yet. I'm still going to class and everything else and projects and studying and stuff. So, if you're busy with shit, it is an added level of difficulty to actually bulk up. Because getting meals in every few hours, I mean... Now this is like the, in no way am I saying this like, what the heck, oh, this sucks, don't they know? But 
Look, man, not every professor is going to be cool with you busting out a Tupperware of steak and rice. So that's the main thing that I want to try to change for the next bulk. Because, you know, I always say I'm trying to improve the training and, you know, I want to be as a, I want to stimulate the muscle, but not overtrain it in like volume or weights and whatever. But that's, I think that really is a minuscule aspect of the training. When it comes to muscle growth in a numbers game, you know, a slight tweak here and there to your training, that's this. That's just a little tiny touch of it. Unless you're eating enough food to actually facilitate growth and make use of the stimulus that you're giving yourself in the gym, then you're not going to grow. And it is an absolute no question scenario that that's the case. So, and I've kind of improved over time. Like, I'm trying to think how many I've done. Maybe like four real bulks so far. Or is it five? No, no, I think like four-ish. Four legit bulks. And each one has gotten better than the last. Like, I'm, you know, heavier. I think I was like 220-ish after the first bulk. Or no, no, no. I was, uh... So I started really bulking up, cutting down at like 200. So the real progress, if you're curious, was 160 pound as a beginner, 200 pound as a college athlete, and then now as an untested athlete, if you know what I'm saying, it would kind of look like this. 230, or no, no, 200 pounds baseline, decently lean, to 230, and then down to about like 210, and then 240, and then down to like 220-ish, and then 250, down to like 230, or to uh, like high 220s, and then I think now 260 at the peak of this last bulk, down to, well, I guess I don't know what I'm going down to. I haven't finished dieting down yet. But each one of those bulks has been, you know, let's just say, done a little bit smarter than the one before it. And I'm getting to the point now where, look, when you're 260 pounds reasonably lean in a bulk, there's not a lot of room for shit. And I don't mean shit like shit food. I mean like bad days, off days, you know, not even consumption of foods during my days. You know, like the less I'm on program dieting wise, the bigger the fluctuations and weight drops are going to become. So, you know, like anything, the longer you do it, the better you'll get at it. But yeah, next bulk, I anticipate some meal prepping. And this will be the first time I actually do that on a real consistent basis. Because usually my mentality is, you know, just cook a meal when I'm hungry. If I'm going to be gone from the house for long enough, then I'll pack one. But, you know, you got to remember, if I'm surrounded by 20 literal fucking Olympia caliber builds, and they're open, you know, that's I'm not, not open size yet, but... You gotta, you gotta think, if they're all doing their Tupperware every few hours, and I'm not, there's something to it for sure. So, get excited for that. I know I fucking am. I'll either, uh, I guess my cooking skills are gonna fucking, you know, ramp up. And like, you know, I can make a good steak. But I'm not just gonna have steak and rice for every meal. I'm sure I'm gonna get fucking tired of it. But, that's sort of what I'm thinking there. But in terms of the show close it was close number one and two. Oh my goodness i wasn't really watching in the uh in the auditorium uh, i was kind of peeking in from the side but when you see Vito do a fucking double buy with a vacuum where it looks like i can see his spine through his stomach like that's how deep he's pulling it in you know after a few angles i thought he had it but i didn't get to see the full actual in-person pose down so don't forget, you know, my opinion, it doesn't really mean too much. It's all about the judges. So unless you're really sitting there in the front seat, you're just not going to. The pictures, they, they do a build like that justice. But if you've never seen someone who's, let's just say, uh, heavily muscled like that, a picture does not conduce. Uh, it's just not conducive to the same fucking awe effect but 
you know, enough chit chat about big ass dudes. Let's actually do the work that'll take to turn you into one and hit back. I haven't even talked about the lift, but you know, whatever. Let's, uh, let's get started. Instead of my, uh, let's just say typical approach of a really heavy set to start, sometimes I kind of do back like triceps. So instead of starting with a real heavy push down, They're just saying kids watch is closed. And for a second, I thought they were going to say the gym was going to close. But no, so instead of a really heavy push down to start, you know, sometimes I like lighter single arm stuff, like even only 20 pounds on the stack, and just really squeezing it and kind of getting more of a, let's just say, a burning effect. But either way, hard set, good start. Let's finish the right lat, move on to the left one, and then just get back started. Let's do two more like that. If you got a problem feeling your lats actually flex, because a lot of people, when they try a pull down or a row or anything, it feels like you're pulling with your bicep and your forearm. Because, I mean, it is tricky. Because for me to want to, you know, pull this fucking, imagine I'm pulling this. For me to want to pull this, my forearm's already firing, my biceps are firing. It is tricky to just want to grip something with your hand but pull by retracting your scapula. Like it is a weird movement, but I do like these single arm pull downs, not only because they fucking burn, but you can really feel your lats firing. So if you've got no mind muscle connection back wise yet, I think this will help. So it's a good set and a practicing tool. Sounds good to me.
My lats are so pumped already. <laughs> I don't think it even matters what I do next. And I'm not even just saying that because of how it feels right now, but even in general, when it comes to back, like I was talking to a few people who actually came to the, uh, like the event and they asked me for a back routine. It was only a few, but I was like, well, kind of whatever, man, you know, pull downs, rows, pullovers, those are pretty much the main three styles of back movement, you know. Of course, there's kind of funkier ones too, but that's pretty much the big three that I like. So, I think you can kind of do them in any order you want. If I'm really strong, kind of bulked up, I do tend to start with more of a heavy row when I'm strong. You know, I just get a lot of tension on my back, because, not your back specifically, but as much as I think burning sets and you know, just pushing yourself to failure, no matter the rep scheme works. If it's in a heavy fucking style and you're actually you know, failing more like an eight reps, I think that's going to be a different stimulus for sure. Because somebody that trains only for 30 rep sets to failure, they could be training fucking hard as hell, but it's not going to build the same amount of strength as heavier sets. And as a real legend has said before, Mr. Yates from across the sea. A big muscle is a strong muscle, and vice versa. So, I don't think heavy weights will ever totally disappear. But sets like this, still very fucking beneficial. Weights wise, I do think that the stack's a little heavier than necessary. But I think there's something special about doing some sets like that. Not all of them, but some. Okay, so to actually maybe explain myself a little further, the reason that I do like a heavy set like this, even if only the first three reps were absolutely complete and I started to only be able to do partials later, in my mind, if you do a set where every rep is absolutely perfect, you're never gonna train to failure. Because it's just, think about it. If I curl a 20 pound dumbbell, 10 times in a fucking row. Totally up here, down. Totally up here, down. And the last rep looks exactly like the first one. I will admit, I'm gonna get pumped. I'm gonna be fatigued at the end of a workout that's just like that. But I never really hit legit failure. I know that if I get to the point where I can only do partials, that means I'm taking my lats and my back and just kind of my whole pulling system as far as I can physically. And in my mind, of the two extremes of training intensity, one being like a bullshit set, like if I put the weight pin at you know, 50 pounds, sat here for 10 reps, 
I can tell you I'm squeezing it as hard as I want, but I'm never gonna actually hit failure like that. And on the other side of the spectrum of intensity, you do some reps to the point where you physically can't move. And I think leaning towards that side, it's gonna be better. And I mean, maybe that's just my opinion, but that's the side I, from my fucking experience, that's what I like. Crazy pumped, reasonably strong, I'm not a power lifter, decently large, fuck man. I'm not saying it as a recommendation, but don't dismiss taking a set to the point of form breakdown. You know, I'm not saying like round your back over in a deadlift and hurt yourself. You get what I'm getting at. But another one here, same weight too. Maybe a drop set though. Okay. Yeah, that was good. Let's move on to a pulling movement, or a, a pull down movement. All these are fucking pulling movements. Nothing much to say here. Kind of a, actually, there is a little fucking something to say here. So if you've ever got a pull down like this, and I don't mean like this, I mean pretty much this exact one. If you're a taller dude, you may run into this issue. Fucking not being able to get a good stretch. Because the way that this machine is set up, if I hold the handles right here in the middle, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting down. This is not a fully stretched position. Like something way up here would be. So if you've ever got this predicament, just do a wider grip. If I hold way out here on the ends, I can't fully sit down. So, little things like that. But I think a wide grip pull down set. This weight isn't too crazy either. So I'll really be able to squeeze and kind of try to imagine pulling my elbows behind my back so that they'll touch each other. That's kind of the cue I'm thinking. And then I might do two of these and say we're done. I'll have to see how the pump feels and how I feel fatigue wise. But this back day is on track. Really good, especially after like, you know, the last few days of travel and everything. <clears throat> so. The set's not over. I'm just doing a little rest pause. I did re grip a little bit too. One more. One more set of, um, I don't know what I really want to do. Let's take a minute, scan the area and pick a good finisher. So I know I talked all that smack on double arm pullovers before, but at this point my lats are so fucking burned out. 
doing a pullover with a rope, which I don't typically love, will still feel good enough to fatigue my lats. So the plan for this last set is a uh, sort of a two for one, kind of a super set, but also hitting both major parts of my back at once. Nothing crazy though, not like a heavy row or a deadlift or anything. Pre-exhaust, so you know, let's say portion A of the set, pullovers with the rope. I'm not even insanely concerned about hitting complete failure, but I do just want to get, you know, the finishing touches on my lats. That's kind of what I'm imagining. And then drop the handle, take this rope off, and do sort of some upper back bias rows. A little bit funkier though, because the handles are not directly in front of me. I'm not pulling like this. I'm kind of pulling from out here, sort of wide. Now, the stretch isn't as crazy, because you don't get to fully pull your shoulders forward and get your shoulder blades like way reached out. But something about the squeeze, when you pull your arms inward, rather than just straight towards you. I mean, you know that clip from Civil War? Helicopter in one hand, base on the other. Captain America, that's sort of, that's sort of what I'm thinking here. But after this, should be a freaky ass lat spread. We're good. Back, complete. Let's go pose down and freaking discuss, man. Okay, let's see, right, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna get the zoom right. But you tell me, you freaking tell me, how is the lat spread? From the back, through the shirt, Oh my goodness, feels pretty cool. Let's see if it translates to reality, which I know it will. I mean, come on. I feel like at this point, even when I say I have a bad pump, it's still freaky. It just might be like slightly less swollen than I'm actually used to with everything else. But what do you think? We're still early days in the cut, nothing insane yet, but I mean, holy crap, <laughs> holy shit. I'm not one to always do a classic bodybuilding relaxed, but let me just hit one with a vacuum too. So when I sit here and breathe weird, what I'm trying to do is blow all the air out of my lungs. Of course, not all of it, they don't totally deflate. But if you're posing down and you got your whole shirt off, you're not just wearing a tank, it will kind of make your poses look cooler. Because if I were to sit here and like try to try to push my gut out. I mean, my midsection looks way. I mean, it's literally it's fucking larger. It's inflated. But if I try to blow all my air out in a vacuum, you will look a little cooler. Oh, it does take you a little bit out of breath though. Let's run through. Let's run through some real ones. Oh, I'm fine with that. Oh, guys, and then same thing for the back. Do 
Oh, oh my gosh. So I'm gonna have to review the clip, but, oh man, I mean, even just fucking, these lats are looking wide, even wider by my standards. We can get a good vacuum in and then we can actually leave. Oh, guys. Lats wide. I can't see my own reflection when I'm facing backwards, but I presume that the traps are fucking thick. All good signs. So, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to delay my motivation to start growing with my motivation to see myself nice and lean at the end of this cut. But when you see dudes who are fucking, I mean, I'm not going to say astronomically bigger than me, but a fucking fair few levels above, it does get me fucking excited. That's sort of a steel sharpened steel situation. You know, you're not going to get that sort of excitement, or at least not to the same degree when you see somebody bigger on your phone, because we've all seen every fucking Larry Wheels, Ronnie Coleman video, absolute demons, but all on just a fucking screen. When you see these guys in real life, I tell you, different story. Let's get in the car though. There we go. And with that, a back day, a back pump, a back session, whatever you want to call it, is complete. And, and with honors, with honors, you know, you didn't just pass, you didn't just get to your degree, you were the, that was a pump of a valedictorian. What I'm really trying to say is good workout, which is, I mean, yeah, it depends on where your bar is really. And it's kind of a combination of things. The amount of time you've done it, your experience level, your dedication level, but there is a bar of progress, which you are going to be satisfied with. And for the beginner, I mean, the total beginner never even lifted before. You know, going to the gym a few times a week, dude, that's progress. That is an amount of, you know, daily, not even daily, but an amount of activity and repetition of a routine, which is going to start giving you results. But as you get more and more results and you progress more and more, the amount of energy and time and I mean, I don't want to, I don't mean mental dedication, but I mean, literally like the amount of energy you're dedicating to, you know, keeping your progress growing. Well, yeah, going and growing, it increases, you know? So for the guy to, to have never have lifted before, to start working out three times a week, if he does that and he works that pretty hard, after a few months, depending on his body fat percentage, like if you're a scrawny dude and you work out a few times a week for a few months, you're going to notice pretty quick. If you're a bigger guy, and this is just the unfairness of the world, it's going to take you a little bit longer. Because size-wise, you may not change too much, even though underneath you do have some solid muscle developing. So for somebody like that, it does take a little while to, for, uh, for your investment to start paying back. But it always will, no matter fucking what. But, you know, even just after a few months of just a few times a week, not even every day, not even doing your cardio, not even tracking your macros, fuck, man. If over the summer you're a total novice and then three months of couple times a week gym sessions, you're going to come back to school and be noticeably bigger. I'm not saying you're going to be huge, but enough that people will notice. And I'm sure by the time you hear that enough, you're going to be fucking amped to keep going. But eventually that, you know, just a few times a week routine, not really you know, putting too much thought into your training, just getting like a, doing a push pull legs, like Monday push, Wednesday pull, Friday legs and then repeating that for a while, it's, uh, it's just not gonna work. It's gonna be enough to maintain where you're at, but after you've gotten a certain amount of progress from that, let's just call it, you know, stimulus, you're gonna get used to it. You're gonna reach a point where you're gonna have to start you know, maybe training a little bit more frequently, a little bit more uh, intensely. The whole time, no matter what, you should be progressively overloading, be it, you know, reps, weights, or a combination of the two. 
And then, you know, fuck, man, maybe you haven't really been hitting your protein. You're going to have to start doing that. Uh, you're going to want it. You're going to want, I mean, not even gains wise, but feeling wise daily. You're going to want to get a good night's rest so that you can actually come back the next day, you know, recovered, ready to train again. And you know, it's just kind of a, it's just kind of a snowball from there. It's an uphill battle where, like I was saying in the car, the longer that you're lifting, the more precise you kind of have to be with your attack, right? Like, let's, uh, like, consider this, you know, there's a, there's a line of 10 different walls. I mean, like a wall in a house, you know, and you've got to break through them. And the further that you go, the more progress you're going to make to break through a wall, a fucking quarter inch drywall, or let's, let's go even come back even easier. If they, if there's just a fucking wall of a big ass sheet of paper, guess what? You're going to be able to jump right through it, rip through. That's beginner gains. Then as time progresses, you're going to have to put a little more energy to break through some drywall. And it just gets, I mean, we're talking fucking the three little pigs here. It is pretty easy to break, to blow down that first house. And then, you know, that's, that's your 135 pound bench. You know, that's your 185 for reps. You know, that's, that's the initial stage, right? Anybody can get there, and it doesn't take too much, you know, to become a, I don't want to say novice, but let's just use that term to, you know, emphasize the idea that you are a beginner, but to become kind of a novice, novice, like a novice kind of amateur lifter level, it's not too hard, you know, anybody can go to the gym, get a pump, you don't even need to know anything about training, you can just go in, do some curls until they start to hurt, put them down, you'll get it, you'll actually fucking feel it, you'll probably feel it the next day, and your newbie gains... You're, dude, you're a fucking well, uh, well fertilized field. Shit's just gonna grow. But as time progresses, you know, fuck man, what's uh, what's the next house made out of wood? You know, that's your, that's your 225 for six. You know, that's your, I'm not one for one rep maxes, but that's your 275 for, you know, one rep. That's your bicep veins. You know, that's being able to squat 315 a couple of times. It's going to take effort, you know, even though I think everyone has a pretty solid level of potential, you know, there's dudes who have insane genetics, total outliers, but even the guys in the, in the middle of the curve, you know, just the average dude, he can totally become a fucking freak within a few years. And I don't mean like 260 pound gearhead, like a lean 180 and you're muscular, you look like you lift, you know? So it can be done. It's just going to take a while. And, you know, the point I keep making is the longer you do it, it's going to require more energy and more effort on your end to keep these results coming, you know? So all I'm trying to say is... Actually, what exactly am I trying to say here? There's a, there's a couple ways I could kind of spin that. But if you've been lifting for a while and you can tell you've kind of been doing the same routine... You haven't really been pushing it insanely hard. Like maybe you have a really good day where you're extra strong. You have a really good lift. Uh, you know, for some people, just getting to the gym, that's the, that's the challenging part. And doing that repetitively, they are on track for progress. But the longer that you do that, you know, things like just going to the gym, that becomes a prerequisite. That's not, you haven't really succeeded yet. Because if your goal is like, okay, I need to totally thrash my back today then going to the gym, that's out of the question. That's a guarantee. You know? And making sure that you get a good night's rest, eat your food, stay decently hydrated, you know, be in a solid mental state where you can actually you know, focus on something for yourself and you're not you know, off stressing out about anything else. You know, things like that are going to make your lifts better and better and better. You know? And the bar that you're going to be satisfied with will gradually increase. Now, assuming you've got a solid amount of ambition fitness wise, then that's just part of the challenge, you know, like if I have a bad lift, a really, oh, I can't even imagine what a bad lift would be like. I'd have to be really out of it. Like I'd have to have some serious stuff going on outside of the gym to keep me from having a good workout, you know, because now that I've done it for so long, you know, just having a, having a normal lift, having a solid lift, like it's not enough for me. I want to really lock in. And make sure that what I'm doing in the gym is effective 
and that everything I do outside of the gym is just going to play into that positive feedback loop. Because you have a good workout, you've now done some damage, your body has a need to repair itself. So, a good amount of rest, food, hydration, everything else will let me come back the next day, feel pretty good. My back's still going to be sore tomorrow, but overall, I will be resting enough so that when I go do arms, I'm not like dragging myself through it. So that's all I'm trying to say there, you know. It's been said before, the late and great rich, the more you put in, the more you get out. And fuck, man, I've heard a lot of sayings in my time, but I mean, not even just when it comes to bodybuilding or fitness or anything, but just fucking everything that you want to do, and that's a really key term, you want to do it, it's true. The more time you spend on it, the more effort you put into it, the more thought and time you spend like kind of imagining where you're gonna be and where you are now and seeing what everyone else is doing and how you're progressing relative to them, you know, being open to new information. If, uh, if you did a screen time, you know, if, you, uh, if I had screen time analytics of my own thoughts like you do on your phone, number one fucking topic going through my head is the gym because everything relates to it you know and i'm not saying that's a good thing like i'm totally a, a nut about it that's um you know for some people that would be a fucking living nightmare if all they were thinking about is the gym but you know since it's my thing i really love it i don't feel too crazy at least not in my own head but yeah fucking okay i gotta get a good night's rest because i'm gonna do cardio in the morning okay is there uh all right, we're going on a trip. Where's a good gym going to be? That's what I'm looking up. You know, And don't take that as though I don't, you know, have energy and interests or anything else outside of the gym. Why is this fucker flashing his lights on me? I have no idea. Uh, but, yeah, so, look, I'm not saying the only thing coursing through my fucking brain is working out. But it's probably the main thing. And I would like to think that, you know, my results and progress and just everything else kind of reflects that. So, you know, that's kind of up to you. It depends on your own situation. But if you've got kind of an, a little itch in the back of your mind, a little whisper, which is telling you that you've got something that you enjoy and that you want to kind of excel at and be proficient at and really kind of get legit skill to the point where you stand out compared to everyone else, if you have something like that and you know it, you will regret not putting energy into it. And I cannot say that with enough emphasis. And I know that's kind of silly for me to say because I'm, in terms of my life, I'm still a fucking you know, young pup. But I know if I was fucking, if I could look forward in time in an alternate reality where, you know, for whatever reason, uh, and I'm lucky enough that I've never even had a reason which would come up to get me to stop working out. Uh, knock on wood, of course, I'm not asking for trouble from the universe. Uh, but if there's an alternate reality where you know, I just end, didn't end up working out, this thing wasn't, this wasn't my thing, fuck man, I may not have even ever had something that I could put this much effort into. And it doesn't have to be working out, it can be, you know, anything. But I really think there's kind of a, and this, we're getting kind of fucking spiritual here in a way. Maybe not spiritual, but it, you've got a thing. It's almost a calling where if you can find something where you combine interest and proficiency, so you've got a knack for fucking, you know, programming. One of my buddies, uh, his brother, he, um, he was kind of a weirder dude. Well, I don't know. What am I saying? That's a... That's, uh, that's not what I mean. But he's real into fucking computers. He loves it. Sitting at it all day. And he got into fucking computer programming. That's what this dude spends day after day doing. To the point where he's like... He's on a college computer programming team. And the only reason that they're not at like a national level... Is because the rest of the team isn't as good as him. Like, if it was an individual event... This dude would be top 0.001% in the fucking world. And, of course, I think a lot of that is the baseline proficiency, like, skill. Like, his brain is just wired to get into that. But also, he spends hours upon hours doing it, right?
right? Looping back to the more fucking time you spend on something, the better you're going to get at it. And I don't just mean time. I also mean effort and thought, you know, because you can go to work every fucking day of your life. And, you know, if you're just kind of killing time, and I don't mean like work, like, like a normal job. I mean anything. You know, when you were in high school and you had a, you were on the track team, that there were guys who would just come there, go to every practice, but they just didn't give a shit. They were there. They weren't really pushing it. Maybe they just didn't like it. It's no wonder that they didn't make any progress and they were always, you know, back of the line and, uh, or like lowest placings. And I'm not saying that's a dog on them. You know, not everybody loves everything that they're doing, but you know, if you're lucky enough to find something like that, you're going to regret not putting a hundred percent into it because you can, I mean, you can get back into stuff over time, but you can never get time back. And, uh, I'm definitely glad that I can sort of, and of course, I'm still fucking, I'm kind of just really saying this, like I don't have the same perception or perspective as somebody who's a lot older than me would. So, you know, when they talk about their regrets, it's a little bit different. You know, I'm just talking about hypotheticals, but you know, it's good to have something like that. And that's not a, that's not a fucking groundbreaking thought, you know, I'm sure if you're gossiping about your friends or family and you're like, oh yes, well, you know, she's not really doing much. That's you know, just the nature of the world and life itself. If you're staying in the same place year after year after year, everything's moving forward around you. So don't uh, try not to get left behind in a sense. But enough introspection plan for tonight is just fucking chill. Lift done. I don't have to cram food into my gullet because I'm uh, trying to stick to my deficit. No, no, come on, that's crazy. I'm not trying to stick to my deficit. I am sticking to my deficit. So that is one positive of dieting, dieting down that I like. Is it? Uh, it just takes less effort physically. I mean, yes, it, there is kind of a mental draw where it's like, oh fuck, man, I'm hungry. I, I gotta eat something. Shit. But if you kind of distract yourself. It's not too bad, you know. I think that's almost a that's a that's a point of dieting I haven't really brought up, you know. Keep yourself moving, do some shit. I can tell whenever I'm dieted down, I'm much more prone to just go walk around the city or whatever. Or if I'm going to get groceries, maybe I'll ride my bike and bring a big backpack instead of the car, just because I know, you know, I'm not really in a rush. So that's a that is one positive of a uh, of dieting down, especially in the summertime. If you're still in, uh, if you're still in school, because you know you're kind of combining your your free time with you know, a routine that's kind of more conducive with free time. <laughs> so, if you've never gotten into a big bulk or a cut, then you wouldn't really get what I'm saying there. But yeah, getting back to being distracted, just do stuff, man. You know, if you're dieting down and all you do is sit in your room all day, or you just like you're not really doing anything, kind of a uh, kind of just killing time. There's sort of a appeal to eating, which isn't even based on hunger. It's just based on boredom. You know, if you're sitting in front of the TV with a bag of chips, that bag of chips is going to disappear. And it's not because you're hungry. You're just kind of, you're just kind of doing it instinctively. It's like it's there, so you're chowing down, you know? So, idle hands are the devil's playthings. And in a dieting context, the same thing is fucking true. So... What you're going to do with your time, I mean, who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe learn how to paint. Maybe read a book. Maybe, um, maybe do some stretching. Depending on how big you are as a lifter, touching your toes can be a little tricky. I know I should start fucking stretching. Oh, yeah, now that I say that, yeah, I think I'm going to have to start doing it, too. Because I can get reasonably flexible. You know, I used to do all sorts of gymnastics and diving and stuff. Like, a, I don't know if you know what a straddle stretch is. Where you sit down, you spread your legs like a 90 degree, and then you try to flatten your torso so your head's touching the ground. When I really stretch out for a little while, I can, I can get pretty mobile. I should probably start doing that. I just don't do any, anything really athletic anymore, so I never really feel the need to stretch out. But that is probably good for me to be a little more limber. 
plus some time in this diet, I gotta go to the pool at my school and jump around on the diving boards, make use of my time as, <laughs> I was about to say a light 235 pounder, <laughs> as if that's light. Jeez, uh, but yeah, don't worry. I know I, I hint at it all the time, I'm total chump for it, but specials will happen soon. I'm talking grocery trip, full day of eating everything. I, uh, I just get into a little routine of just doing the lifts, but uh, yeah. you know I'm going to say it, do your cardio. I can't convince you guys, but I know I will. So plan is now, shower off, get my laundry going, eat a little bit, sleep, and the seated bike, 30 minutes. It's not even that much, but I will see you next time. Actually, I'll see you for that cardio video tomorrow.